When the United States Armed Forces entered Korea in 1950, the 1st Provisional Marine Brigade held the line at the Battle of Busan. At the Battle of Incheon, General Douglas MacArthur called on the ground and air forces of the Marines to make an amphibious landing. The operation was a success, and U.S. and U.N. forces were able to decimate the North Korean lines and send the enemy forces on the run near the Yalu River. It was the Battle of Chosen Reservoir, or the Frozen Chosen, as it came to be called, that became another testament to the will, resolve, and tenacity of the United States Marine Corps. UN and US forces were surrounded by over 60,000 members of the Chinese People's Volunteer Army fighting alongside the North Koreans. A battle ensued over the frozen terrain that lasted 19 days. Allied forces were able to inflict crippling losses upon the Chinese soldiers, allowing UN forces to successfully evacuate the frozen death trap. The incident, like Bellow Wood in World War I or Iwo Jima in World War II, further cemented the image of the toughness and resolve of the United States Marine Corps. And the Marine Corps held the 38th parallel until the armistice of 1953. Ted Williams, a popular baseball player for the Boston Red Sox and World War II veteran, was recalled into active duty for the Korean War in 1952. Williams had served as a flight instructor for the Marines in World War II and was awaiting deployment when the war in the Pacific ended. By the time he was recalled for duty in Korea, Williams was 33 years old and had not flown any aircraft in over eight years. Williams turned down an offer to play for the Armed Services baseball team, instead opting to fight. He went on to fly 39 combat missions during the war before being grounded with pneumonia and an inner ear infection. Williams sacrificed what would have surely been career highs in baseball, such as the opportunity to surpass Babe Ruth's home run record and Hank Aaron's RBI totals in order to do what he felt was his patriotic duty. General Douglas MacArthur was named by Williams as one of his idols. And on Williams' 40th birthday, the general is reported to have sent the ball player an oil painting of himself bearing this inscription. To Ted Williams, not only America's greatest baseball player, but a great American who served his country. Your friend, Douglas MacArthur, General, U.S. Army. During the final half of Williams' tenure as a Marine pilot, he served alongside another notable Marine, flying as the wingman to future astronaut John Glenn. John Glenn flew 59 missions as a fighter pilot for the Marines during World War II. Then, with Marine Attack Squadron 311, he flew the F-9F Panther Jet Interceptor for 63 combat missions earning a reputation as a magnet for enemy flak, twice returning to base with more than 250 flak holes in his plane. As part of an inter-service exchange program, Glenn then flew 27 missions in the F-86F Sabre with the United States Air Force, 4th Fighter Wing. After serving as a test pilot for a few years, Glenn was then selected as one of the original group of seven astronauts chosen to work on Project Mercury, in spite of not having a college degree. On February 20th, 1962, John Glenn became the first American to orbit the Earth. A Marine Corps fighter pilot from 1954 through 1956, Fred Hayes was selected in 1966, among 19 others, as new astronauts for NASA. He served as a backup lunar module pilot for the Apollo 8 and 11 missions and flew as the module pilot on the ill-fated Apollo 13 mission. Hayes later worked 
with the Space Shuttle Program, participating in the approach and landing tests at Edwards Air Force Base. He was slated to pilot the shuttle on a mission to Skylab, but delays, budget cuts, and the deterioration of the space station led to the abandonment of that mission. My fellow Americans, not long ago I received a letter from a woman in the Midwest. She wrote, Dear Mr. President, in my humble way I am writing to you about the crisis in Vietnam. I have a son who is now in Vietnam. My husband served in World War II. Our country was at war. But now, this time, it's just something that I don't understand. Why? In addition to the fighting in Da Nang, Hue, and Khe Sanh, the U.S. Marine Corps in the Vietnam War also participated in the Combined Action Program, an effective counterinsurgency tool used to combat the intense guerrilla warfare that the U.S. forces faced, in addition to the traditional military fighting. Marine platoons would station in and around rural Vietnamese villages and provide training and security from Viet Cong belligerents for the people who live there. Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara ruminated on the program. The large unit operations war, which we know best how to fight and where we have had our successes, is largely irrelevant to pacification as long as we do not have it. Success in pacification depends on the interrelated functions of providing physical security, destroying the VC apparatus, motivating the people to cooperate, and establishing responsive local government. Indeed. The CAP program was one of the few lasting and successful operations of the Vietnam War. It is estimated that none of the over 200 villages that were a part of this program were ever given over to Viet Cong control. At midnight on January 30th, 1968, members of the Viet Cong and North Vietnamese Army attacked every provincial capital in the 1st and 2nd Corps tactical zones in South Vietnam. While the mortar and rocket attacks, followed by massed ground assaults, came somewhat as a surprise, the U.S. forces were able to drive back most of the communist attackers by daybreak, including a nearly successful attack upon the U.S. Embassy in Saigon, which was thwarted by military police and Marine security guards with the loss of only five. As his fellow Marines were wounded or killed in the fighting in Vietnam, Carlos Hathcock was avenging them with each target who entered his sights. Hathcock, a gunnery sergeant who went on to record 93 confirmed kills in Vietnam, also became the most renowned Marine Corps sniper of all time. Hathcock once famously shot an enemy sniper through the enemy's own rifle scope, striking the man in the eye and killing him. After the sheer number of enemies taken out by Hathcock had become known, the North Vietnamese Army placed a bounty on Hathcock's head for $30,000. It is the record for any bounty placed on a sniper by the NVA who typically offered $1,000 to $2,000. Later in his career, Hathcock advised in the creation of the Marine Corps Sniper Training Program, and as well trained police and other law enforcement agencies snipers. Most famously, Hathcock had previously trained members of SEAL Team 6, the task force ultimately responsible for killing Osama bin Laden in 2011. Even in the weeks before the fall of Saigon, U.S. Ambassador Graham Martin was optimistic that South Vietnamese forces could hold back the crushing communist throngs that had begun to surround South Vietnam's capital city. 
Martin did not want to show any signs of possible United States abandonment of the country. However, on April 29, 1975, Tansinat Airport was attacked, forcing an early evacuation. In addition to the Marines, security guards, and U.S. forces outside the embassy, another 130 Marines from the 2nd Battalion, 4th Marines, were called in to reinforce the perimeter as the compound was evacuated. Marine pilots accumulated over 1,000 flight hours and flew over 600 sorties during Operation Frequent Wind, the official name of the evacuation plan. By 11.30 on April 30th, the NVA, now calling themselves the People's Army of Vietnam, stormed the gates of the embassy and raised their flag above the building, signaling an end to the Vietnam War. First, we didn't know ourselves. We thought that we were going into another Korean War, but this was a different country. Secondly, we didn't know our South Vietnamese allies, and we knew less about North Vietnam. Who was Ho Chi Minh? Nobody really knew. So until we know the enemy and know our allies and know ourselves, we'd better keep out of this kind of dirty business. It's very dangerous.